ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with his companions he was never stingy with his praises of them he was never stingy with his praises of them we live in a time where we believe that many believe that your success is my failure so that means that i have to kind of keep you at the bottom in order to keep myself at the top And so we, we're very stingy when it comes to giving people praises, saying something nice about people. We always have negative things to say about people and we need to remove that negativity from our circle because negativity it breeds, it's a breeding ground for the shayateen. Evidenced by the hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu was sitting with Abu Bakr and a man came and insulted him. A man came to Abu Bakr and he began to insult Abu Bakr. And while he was insulting Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr never responded back to him. And the Prophet Sallallahu sat there, Yabtesim, smiling, amazed at the tolerance of Abu Bakr not to respond back. But then everybody has a threshold and Abu Bakr couldn't take it anymore and he responded back to the individual and the Prophet ﷺ got up and walked away. Abu Bakr chased him down and he asked him, he said, Oh Muslim Jawlah, you sat there and smiled while the individual was insulting me. He said, فَلَمَّا رَدَّتُ عَلَيْهِ قُمْتَ وَمَشِيْتَ You got up and you walked away. When I responded back to him, you got up and you walked away. The Prophet وسلم, he said, because when you were silent, not saying anything, He said, because when you were silent and you didn't say anything back to the person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel to you to defend you. So everything the individual was saying to you, the individual was, the, the angel was defending you. He said, but when you responded back to the individual, the angel left and the shaitan came and I got up and left because I don't sit in a gathering where they are shaitan. Showing you that when you have negative energy, it is a breeding ground for the shaitan. And when you look at the Prophet ﷺ with his companions, he always praised them. He never withheld praise from people. Some of us may even withhold praise from our children out of fear that our children, you know, may have more confidence than us, may have more self-esteem than us, may have, you know, a feeling of self-worth more than us. He said, فَقِي هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ مُعَاذَةٍ جَبَلٍ The faqee. But well, the person who knows about the halal and the haram of my ummah is Mu'adh ibn Jabal. He said, وَقَارِئٌ لِهَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ أُبَيْ بْنِ كَعْبِ And the person who knows the most Qur'an from my ummah was the best in reciting Qur'an of my ummah is Ubay ibn Ka'ab. One day Mu'adh ibn Jabal, he was climbing in the tree. And some of the Sahaba began to laugh at how skinny his legs were. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Atadhakuna min hatini rajlain. Are you laughing at how little his legs are? He said, Walladhi nafsi bi yadi inna hatini rajlain athqalu inda al mizan yawm al qiyamah min jabali uhud. He said, Are you laughing at Mu'adh's skinny little legs? He said, I swear by the one in whose hands my soul is in. Those two little legs are heavier in the scales on the Day of Judgment than the mountain of Uhud. His two little legs will be heavier in the scales on the Day of Judgment than the mountain of Uhud. 
I mean, you would praise his companions because leaders build leaders, not followers. Leaders build leaders, not followers. And when you look at the community of the Prophet Sallallahu this is what he was doing. He was building future leaders. Whereas today, we praise people very little because we want to build followers. We won't always want you to feel like you are never just good enough, right? I'm the best. You are never good enough. So you want to always be in my shadow as opposed to giving people their due of praise to make them, even if they don't necessarily deserve it, but to give them something to live up to. Give them an expectation to live up to. When you tell your child, I'm disappointed in you, I thought you were better than that. That's greater than you saying you ought to be ashamed of yourself. When you tell a child you ought to be ashamed of yourself, you've debased them, you've belittled them. But when you say, I thought you were better than that, that means that you put a higher expectation on the person and you make them feel like they didn't reach that expectation. It's psychology. It's, it's reverse psychology. And the Prophet وسلم, used to use the same thing with his companions. When Mu'adh ibn Jabal who killed the man after he said, La ilaha illallah, he said, Mu'adh, did you kill the man after he said, La ilaha illallah? Aqataltuhu ba'da an qala la ilaha illallah. Did you kill him after he said, La ilaha illallah? He didn't say, Astaghfirullah, you, you're gonna, you know, Allah's gonna punish you, Yom Al-Qiyah. He didn't wanna take him, take everything away from him. Sometimes we strip a person of everything. You don't know how much people are working with. People may only have just a little bit. And then, you know, they make a mistake or they, they fall into a sin or they do something wrong and we strip them of every little bit that they have. He said, he said, he said you know, Usama, he said, Usama, did you kill the man after he said, La ilaha illallah? He said, O Messenger of Allah, he only said it, Makhafa to Saifi. He only said it because he feared my sword. He knew I was getting ready to kill him. And the Prophet وسلم, he said, Ashaqakta and Sadri, did you open his heart to see whether he really believed? You judging people's intentions now? You know whether somebody really believes now? Not only did you kill him after he said, La ilaha illallah, then you turn around and you're judging his intentions? He's giving, he's giving Usama something. This was one of his younger companions, someone that he loved very dearly. Giving him something, not stripping him because of the mistake that he made, but giving him something, an expectation that he should have lived up to. He said, did you open his heart to see whether he really believed or not? He said, what are you going to do about his statement, La ilaha illallah, yawm al-qiyamah? But you look at it, he didn't strip him. He didn't make him feel like the worst. And this is something that, you know, we do to people. We strip people. As I said before, hurt people hurt people. When you are hurt, you hurt other people. Some of us are hurting from childhood. Things that we have never, you know, reconciled within ourselves from childhood. And we come into adulthood and we're constantly coming in contact with people and we're hurting people that we come in contact with. The Prophet Sallallahu even with people he didn't like, he didn't strip them, he didn't disrespect them, he didn't make them feel less than. A hypocrite came to his door one day and the Prophet Sallallahu asked who it was and Aisha said, it's Fulan, Ibn Fulan. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Bitta Akhu Ashira. He said, how evil this person is to his family. He ought to be, he should, he's an he's a embarrassment to his family. Then he told Aisha, let him in. That when the man, he told Aisha, let the man in. And when the man came in, the Prophet ﷺ smiled at him. You know, in Basata, you know, as he was open with him, he laughed with him, he joked with him. And the whole while, Aisha is watching. When the man got up and left, Aisha said to the Prophet Wasallam, She said, Oh Messenger of Allah, how could you say what you said about him and then smile and laugh in his face? She was conflicted. How can you say what you said about him? How can you say about him what you said about him? He should be an embarrassment. He's an embarrassment to his family. He's an embarrassment to his tribe. And then when he came into your house, you laugh with him, you joke with him. She was conflicted. The Prophet said, Yeah, Aisha, Mata Ahitani Mutafahishan or Fahashan. 
He said, Aisha, when have you ever known me to be disrespectful to people? Even though I dislike him and I said what I said about him, when have you ever known me to be disrespectful to people? He said, Ya Aisha, أبعد الناس منزلة يوم القيامة من فر منه من سوء خلقه. He said that the furthest people from Allah on the day of judgment, Aisha, is the person who people run away from him because of his bad character, because of his imprudent character. Even though you don't like a person, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to tell the person to their face, because you have to be conscious of other people's feelings and how you you affect other people. And the Prophet ﷺ was very conscious of this, uber conscious of this. While today we could care less. And this is why we continue to hurt one another. Everybody we come in contact with, we're hurting people. You know, insensitive about how we come off to people, insensitive about how we say things to people, insensitive about how we appear in front of people. He said to Aisha, when have you ever known me to be the Hashin? You know, to be imprudent or to be someone of foul character, disrespectful to people. Even though it was a hypocrite, someone who really didn't even believe. But he never approached people like this. And I'll end with this comment, Yahya ibn Ma'in. He was given the title, Amir al-Mu'minin fil hadith. The leader of the believers as it relates to hadith. Yahya ibn Ma'in, he said, Ma lahabtu khata'an ala shaqs he said, I've never observed a mistake within an individual. And I wanted to expose that in front of people. I never observed a mistake in a person and I wanted to expose that. And I've never done anything in anyone's face that would hurt them or would offend them. He said, I would take the person by the hand. He said that I would give the person nasiha advice, just me and him. If he accepted the nasiha, then alhamdulillah. If he didn't, then I would just leave it. But I never approached him in his face and said something or did something, offended him in his face with something that, you know, he disliked. And this was along with the fact that I may have observed some mistakes within the individual. This is akhlaq, this is adab, this is, you know, the etiquettes and the, you know, the qualities that we should be, you know, uh, observing and exercising with one another. And we, you know, we should learn how to reconcile whatever it is we, we're dealing with in our internal and not walk around as a ticking time bomb waiting for the wrong person to come in contact with us so that we can show another side of ourselves. You know, life is 90-10, 90% of, 10% uh, of what happens to you, 90% how you respond to it. You don't have control over what someone does to you, but you have control over how you approach someone else. You don't have control what other people do to you, but you do have control and you are responsible for what you do to other people. You know, and this is, you know, the character of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, always conscious about his approach towards people. Always praising people and trying to build people up because leaders build leaders, not followers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam at tasleem al kathira wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa